If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Hi, welcome back. In last lecture, we have seen about throughput. That is the uh, second uh, step we took to identify the bottleneck analysis. And I got few uh, inputs to explain more about hits per second and throughput. So in this lecture, we are going to see about hits per second and throughput somewhat in depth so that you can understand, which will help you to analyze the bottleneck. In analysis, hits per second will always be between the time and the hits per second. So time will be in the x axis and the y axis you will get the hits per second. Hits per second is nothing but the number of HTTP requests made by the users during the execution. So in this graph, you can see uh, at every uh, second, if you plot, you can see some hits per second. So maximum it is going up to 15.5 and the least is going below 5. So this is the hits per second. So remember, whenever uh, we are talking about hits per second, is it is nothing but the HTTP requests. Now let us talk about throughput. So throughput here, it is in terms of uh, bytes per second, which is uh, the data transferred between the client and server. So how much data is being transferred uh, during the execution uh, based on the uh, number of users you injected. So usually if you're taking, uh, if you're testing a, a, a typical web application, hits per second and throughput always might go with uh, sync. So if, we, if the hits per second are more, uh, the throughput also will be more. If there is a decrease in the throughput, there will be a less in hits per second. It's a very typical, uh, we can say, uh, web applications, a simple web app. But if you're testing uh, uh, files or you're testing uh, some of the RMTP protocol, uh, anything related to the objects, very high objects, uh, high file size, uh, so you will get more throughput with less number of hits per second. For example, uh, so here, this is the uh, one of the uh, dummy PDF file which is located in uh, w3.org. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on inspect element and I'm going to network tab. And I'm going to hit refresh. So ideally we are making only uh, one request basically apart from this icon file and let us ignore this uh, icon. Uh, this is only one hit, but the uh, the data transferred between uh, my computer to the server is around 20 KB because the file size, the dummy PDF file size itself, it is 19 KB and along with some other uh, icon file, it is making up to uh, uh, 20 KB. The actual, sorry, that actual PDF is uh, 12.95 and uh, at the bottom you can see th this is 20 uh, plus KB which is including headers and other information and the icon file is uh, 6 KB. Let us uh, validate this file size now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, save this file and I'm going to open. So this is my dummy.pdf or you can open this. And here the file says you can see 13 KB. So just to validate, right click uh, properties. And here you can see 12.9 KB, right? Size. And let us go to uh, uh, the Firefox. And here you can see the same size, 12.95 KB. So now we are going to use this request in uh, ViewGen. And let us see uh, how we can uh, validate the data transfer between the client and server. So go to ViewGen and I already uh, scripted this code. It's very simple. First, the line number three, what I've done is I'm declaring a variable uh, file size. And line number five, I'm using the uh, webget int property and uh, the property name is HTTP info download size. So what it will do is it will uh, uh, identify the file size of this uh, immediate request. So here I'm going to get this particular uh, PDF file and I'm going to print the message uh, of the file size. So here the file size is the actual uh, file size of this particular request. Now let us execute. Okay, now the execution has been completed. As you see uh, here, the file size is around uh, this many bytes. So 
if you convert this into the uh, KB, you will get around 20 plus uh, something because uh, it is including the uh, header information, uh, other uh, uh, log details and uh, response headers, uh, request headers, everything. So that is why it is always more. But the actual file size will be the uh, file size which we have seen uh, in this uh, property. So now if we uh, run this particular script with uh, 10 virtual users, uh, you will get more throughput because 10 virtual users, if uh, they are hitting concurrently, uh, it will download uh, 12.9 uh, KB for every uh, hit. So if you take one hit, it will be 12.9. 20, 20, if it is a 100 hits, it will be like 12.9 into 100 times. So the throughput will be very high in this case, but hits per second will be uh, uh, what we can it's consistent or uh, less. So in this context, the throughput is will not be in sync with uh, hits per second, but there will be a consistency. So that is what I'm trying to say. There will be a trend you can observe. So if based on the application you are testing, the trend between the hits per second and throughput, uh, you can observe it uh, by doing, uh, if you do more runs, you can uh, see the trend. So if there is something abnormal, you can easily identify by comparing the hits per second and throughput. So that is what I'm just trying to uh, uh, share it with you guys so that you can understand the importance of hits per second and throughput. So probably in next lecture, I will execute this script with uh, actual uh, uh, five virtual users uh, because it is a public domain. I cannot put 50 virtual users and test for uh, 30 minutes. So what I can do is I can run with five virtual users for about five minutes and then we'll see uh, what is the uh, throughput we are getting in the analysis. So I hope this lecture is uh, useful. Uh, please do subscribe to QA Insights. Uh, for more such tutorials and, uh, and tips. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel.